Hi, this is Glenda. I've been playing with with uh, rosettes, and I looked up the history, and apparently they have been around for over a thousand years. Uh, they're normally associated with um, awards and medals, and for hundreds of years we've been using them as part of um, ribbons and things for for prizes. So. A few years ago, Tim Holtz brought out a die and said they're really cool to put on cards. So we've been putting them furiously on cards ever since, um, and scrapbook pages and everything else. I suspect we were beforehand, but um, you know, when Tim says it's cool, it's cool. So I've been looking at different ways to make them, looking at all the things I've saved. Um, the simplest way, if you've got no tools whatsoever, you can fold a strip of paper back and forth. Um, by hand and you know so there is no reason why anybody with a piece of paper cannot make a rosette. The next thing would be to add in a scoreboard um, and score it at every quarter inch and you get a much neater thinner profile. Um, if you have an electronic cutting file, a cutting machine uh, there are heaps of free patterns out there the silhouette store is full of patterns um, Bird has a pattern which I'll mention again uh, and I'll mention a scan and cut one at the end. Um, so you know lovely neat finish with the electronic cutters. Um, if you score it but don't uh, if you yeah if you don't fold it right hard all the way along you'll get this sort of soft ribbony look um, if you're just sort of pinching in the ends and then leaving it. Now, uh, the next thing is to use a scoreboard, but to use your border punches um, to get a pretty edge on them, um, which I, I think is the one of the best effects. Um, these two are done with dies. I've only got a couple of dies, and honestly, I wouldn't replace them. This is uh, an MFT die, uh, which produces this. Obviously you've got no control over the width because it's got blades either side and it does a 3 8 inch um, score which uh, is very deep so I don't think that's as neat as that. Um, so probably not one of my better purchases. This one is a Nelly Snellen die and it takes a different approach. Uh, you cut out two of these and um, you end up with this very very low profile rosette which for cards is great. Um, it's a little bit fiddly to fold but it, as I say it's a very low profile. Um, so that's all of those for all scored and um, using punches. So then I got very excited when I heard about this method because I I have been hot gluing and I think after trying all these hot glue is my preferred method um, but this one you actually thread uh, you put holes in um, and then pull a thread through and I'll show you that also a bit later um, but it I found it still almost as fiddly it's good if you've got a fear of hot glue um, but I found I couldn't pull it in quite the same but anyway, that's just personal preference. And I did have to use a thicker card for it and a slightly wider um, fold because um, you've got to be able to get the holes in. So this was another favourite. This is done with a scallop punch. Um, and I folded it where the, the scallops are. Uh, sorry, this was done with a scallop die. Uh, so it's a little bit bigger. Um, and it, I'll show you how to do it with the punch but it's the same you can use any scallop die and this one was done with a scallop punch and it ends up a little bit fluffier with the punch. Um, this was one of Tim's suggestions to put a strip of washi tape on it before you fold it and you get this two-tone effect. Um, this one I used a double edge punch and got a sort of a flower look. Obviously there's no centers on these because I want to see the workings of all these that's what this charts all sort of all about. Um, it's it's different, it's not something I'd recommend, but that was yeah, double edge punch. Um, 
I'm trying to read upside down now. Um, this one, if you fold your strip in half, um, lengthwise, then you can actually put the punch sort of halfway in and get a, another pattern in the middle. And I found I didn't have many punches that it would work with, and it was quite fiddly, and it ended up quite wide, and it is a pretty effect, but I probably won't be fussing again. You can add a couple of layers. These papers are all scraps. I, I did all this out of my waist rather than use good paper for just test pieces. Uh, but yes, you can double layer. So this one was just a doily. You um, cut a hole out of the center of your doily and then just concertina it up and you end up with this soft look. Um, these are, oh yes, these are, these are, are lovely. These are Bird's File. Um, but she doesn't have any score lines on it, so I added score lines. Um, but they are so sweet, those ones. I, they're definitely a favourite. Um, now, this was, uh, I've, what I've done is make a scan and cut file, um, which again I'll explain in a minute. But uh, that's this, the score marks from the scan and cut, and then a border punch. Um, and this was the same thing. The only thing is with a, a wide uh, pattern like that it tended to break on some of the scores so I wouldn't recommend it for for that. If you want to use a board, board punch like that use your scoreboard to do your scoring. Um, this is a scan and cut file that I've put together where you can use the string method and again I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, this one I used the scan and cut file I've made to do the scoring and added one of the inbuilt borders with it, um, but it did tear a bit, so there is a, a trick to it. Um, and this was the same thing, one of the inbuilt borders and the scan and cut file that I've made. So they are all the things I've tried, um, and a few that didn't make it because they just didn't work for me. But as I say, I think. One of the big game changes is being able to use our border punches. Um, so that's one where I have used the scoreboard to score it and the wide border punch and I think they really make a statement. <coughs> so um, I'm not going to do a proper demo of, of how to do these. Obviously you are going to um, take your strip of paper. now usually about 12 inches long and you want it between um, half an inch to one and a half inches wide whatever you with you have your rosette will be double anything once you get to two inches you're going to need two 12 inch strips this is short because I messed up my punching and I'm hoping it'll be alright but normally a 12 inch strip um, you score it at every quarter inch um, and as I say if you're going to do it um, once you get up past about one and a half and close to two inches you will need two strips um, or it won't fold up properly so you know pretend I just did all that scoring in front of you and uh, all your tears so then you would take your border punch and punch along the edge and some of them are a bit finicky because you've got score lines in but I think it's easier to put your score lines in before you do your punching but experiment by all means um, Obviously, I've already pre-folded this, and that's why it's going together so easily. Hopefully easily. So, you're going to put a bit, you know, you need to use red tape for this. It, they will pop apart if you use anything less strong than red tape. Um, and you want this to end up so that you've got um, your patterns are going to, to keep your up and down patterns going um, so you often have to chop off a piece and we'll just line that up um, one of the best tips people have had is um, if you can get a circle of some sort, 
to put your rosette in to hold it in place. So this is one I made up a while ago from someone's suggestion and I don't think I kept the original suggestion so I, I couldn't give credit but I have mentioned it in a video before with the correct credit. Um, but So you can have it hold in place for you. You can also use your tape if it's the right size. It's going to depend on your rosette, what works, um, a lid, um, anything round that happens to be the right size and that will help you hold it together and I am going to try and tape this one which is not my favorite method this is just a strong double-sided tape we'll put it down but I have been hot gluing them I like the hot glue you've got a little bit of wiggle room to fix it up um, when you're done and if I can find it using double tape I would then put some white glue in just to make sure it, it holds um, so that's making, oh there goes my glue, okay put it there, um, that's making a rosette. I thought I should throw in the basic instructions while I'm at it. So as I say what I've done with the file, um, the scan and cut file will look something like this. It's got three rows, now each row is a block that you won't be able to do anything else with. Um, I should also say, when you're, if you're doing a number of these, when you're scoring, um, take a full length of paper and do all your scoring you know, all at once on a big piece and then you can cut your strips and that will save a lot of time. If you're only doing one, that's not relevant, but if you're doing a number, um, you know, it saves a lot of time. Um, so this file, uh, you would delete the pieces you don't want to use, but that's a whole piece, that's a whole piece. There is a third one of these which wouldn't fit on this piece of paper. Um, now this shorter one, I mentioned Bird has um, a, a wonderful set of files, it's four files and I'll put the link to it, but no score lines. So if you take this smaller piece, you can overlay that on her file um, and it'll do your score lines. Um, now the thing is, when you're doing any of these, what you want is a gap up here because when you border punch, you don't want your top line to come where you're punching because that's where it tends to tear. So you want to leave yourself a little gap at the top for your punching. Um, and I hope that makes sense. But anyway, you can get the scan and cut to cut out sheets with all your scores on it and then you can cut the strips as you need them and you can border punch it and then cut it off to the length you need. So as I say there's three of those in the file which, and that's a, a whole piece, that's a whole piece, this is a whole piece. This one at the bottom is um, what I was saying about the the threading and what it is is um, all the holes in it. So you, you concertina, you file, uh, your strip you thread all your, your thread through, um, just back and forth. Then you're going to join it together in a loop. And we've got one more to put through. I, I, I mean, you can do your threading after you've joined it in the loop if you like, but I thought it was easier to do it before. So you just want a big darning needle or something. Mine is actually a leather needle with a very sharp point, it happened to be the big one I found, but it's actually a good idea to use that. Um, so then you have to carefully pull it together, and this is why you, you do need the heavier cardstock so it doesn't tear. But I must admit, I, I did have trouble getting it to go like, I, I had hot gluing with the, ro with the other method down pat and so this wasn't as appealing um, but I was very excited when I first saw it so you just have to try and pull it together you probably do it on the back but equally you can then have it as a little bow in the middle um, just try and tie it tight Then you trim it off, and when you stick it on the project, that will help it not um, buckle up. 
but that's that's what this one's about if you want to try that and you have a scan and cut um, so that's that one if you want to try it without you just need to punch holes in the bottom of your sheet um, as I said this was one of my favorites uh, using the this is a two and three eighth a two and three eighth scallop punch um, and what you want to do, I mean, as I said, you can use the scallop dies for it, or you can do a scallop on, on your cutter. Um, you want two of them, and you're going to fold it between the scallops, and it there is a trap. When you go like this and line it up, you can actually end up in between on, on the pointy bit, and you don't want that. Make sure each time that you're lining up the side of your scallops and uh, you're just going to do that all the way around until they're all scored and I don't think it's worth trying to fuss with a scoreboard for this I think it's more accurate to just do it this way So then you're going to snip it up to the middle, down one of them, and then fold it back and forth. And then you just put some sticky strip on one piece. And if you haven't heard my tip on sticky strip for the backings, um, just touch it onto a baby wipe and it will stick on the baby wipe instead of on you. One of my favourite hints and tips. So you're just going to stick both those together. And that's it. There's no more fussing with it. That's the rosette done. Um, you know, trying to pin it down and have it bounce up or anything. As I say, it's more, um, it's got more fullness to it, but if you don't want that fullness, just cut out a couple of the segments before you stick it together. Um, I'm not sure how many you'd want to take out, probably two. I suppose we could try it. Um, well, actually, if we just bend it in, yeah, if, if we take out double segment off each one then it sits a lot flatter um, so that's that one and then I did make some cards so um, you know here's a very basic card with just the border punched on the um, rosette uh, this one I border punched it and I've added the washi tape. <coughs> These are birds' um, little files, and <coughs> excuse me. As I say, they are very, very cute. I mean, you can get the same look simply by cutting it. I think it's about an inch. Um, if you make a tiny rosette, you'll get um, it's about three quarters of an inch. So if you cut your strip three quarters of an inch, you'll end up with a cutie like that. Um, and they weren't quite as long, they're about 11 inches long I think. This is um, the scallop one but I didn't join it together and made it into a baby pram. And then of course you can put big ones in behind um, as a different look all together. Um, and Becca at Amazing Paper Grace has some tutorials on doing those. So that's my uh, four into rosettes. I did have a hint sheet uh, so I mentioned scoring a whole sheet at once to save time um, and then you do cut it into strips between a half inch and a one and a half inch sort of the ideal sizes and it's a 12 inch strip to start with you're scoring it every quarter inch um, and if you make it wider you will need two strips if you're going to have um, a kit for a group apart from basic 
kit you would add in the, um, a scoreboard or a cutter where you can score in the groove um, you know any of these where they've got a groove you can score in those instead but a scoreboard is a great advantage for this the strong red tape um, some large glue dots or hot glue gun or something like that uh, the small circle punch to make all your little um, circles to go on the back of these um, border punches to do your edges uh, the scallop punch if you want to do that pattern paper um, something round um, like a jar lid or whatever to help you shape your rosette uh, needle and thread if you want to use that method um, the flower centers, bling, buttons, whatever you want to put in the middle um, and washi tape if you want to use that so you know his sort of uh, four enter rosettes plus um, another second virtual craft club idea and um, if you've stayed with me this long then thank you and um, yeah I, I like rosettes I don't do them often enough um, maybe I should do more but I, I did do all this once before for a group and it was before I was filming YouTube so I couldn't find any record of what I'd done which was very frustrating um, so now at least I have a record and I have my samples and um, good to go. Thanks for watching.